Screenings for Ebola will begin at five U.S. airports this weekend. But what exactly will those screenings look like and what is the technology involved? For Insight, we're joined by Lawrence Gostin, professor of law at Georgetown University and director at the World Health Organization's Collaborating Center. Thanks so much for joining us today, Professor. My pleasure. So if you would, please walk us through what is likely to happen during one of these screenings. Well, if you're coming only from one of the three most affected countries, which is Sierra Leone, Guinea, or Liberia, and no other country, um, you'll be uh, singled out. Uh, you'll be asked to fill out a questionnaire. You'll talk to the customs officer, who will ask you additional questions, and you'll be um, uh, and your temperature will be taken. Uh, and then if you have uh, symptoms or a, a possible exposure, uh, then uh, CDC quarantine authorities will make the judgment about whether or not um, uh, you need additional screening or even uh, safe isolation. Okay, well, let's break this down a bit further. Are the people conducting the screenings wearing protective gear? And how exactly are the passengers, is the passenger's temperature taken? Is it with a thermometer or is it with that machine we just saw a picture of? Yeah, it's basically, um, the, if you're seeing the customs officer, as you're going through customs, the customs officer will be dressed in the same way that he or she is always dressed. Uh, if you're then interviewed by a CDC quarantine officer, that officer will make a determination about whether this is a high-risk situation. I would imagine that if it was a high-risk situation, they would indeed wear protective gear. But if it was not, they would not, and they wouldn't want to scare people. Um, and the temperature would be taken just individually and remotely, um, you know, with a projectile thermometer. Okay, now how does this compare to the SARS outbreak in terms of the screening process? Well, uh, it's, it's much different. Um, First of all, in the United States, uh, we never had fever screening. And so this is the very first time, to my knowledge, in history that we've done fever screening for a, an infectious disease. But we did uh, uh, provide information uh, to passengers. Uh, but in Canada and in Asia, they had mass fever screening. And there, everybody entering the airport was literally went through a, an electronic thermal detector, uh, and then a, a, an officer was there to see who might have temperatures and then would, would single them out. Sure. That really didn't work very well. I think there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of passengers, and I don't think they got one confirmed SARS case from that. Well, my next question is, can you game this system? How thorough can the screening process be? Can't someone who's determined to get by, just take some Tylenol? Well, yes, they can. But let me say one thing, that the CDC have uh, put forward the most measured and balanced approach, given enormous political pressure to do far worse things like mass fever screening or even more catastrophic uh, travel bans or travel restrictions. So they've done something moderate. Will it work? Well, um, it's unlikely to pick up many cases um, because uh, a person can be asymptomatic for up to 21 days. Thomas Duncan, for example, wouldn't have been picked up because he was not symptomatic. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you could always take Tylenol to lower your temperature. And mm -hmm. during SARS, that happened quite a bit. But just very quickly, if the person is found to have a temperature or other symptoms, is that person then immediately quarantined in a room at the airport? And what about everyone else on the plane with that passenger? Well, it depends upon the level of suspicion that the person has Ebola. Um, certainly, if the person has a, a, a history where he or she has been exposed to an Ebola patient in one of the three affected countries and is showing symptoms characteristic of Ebola, um, that person, I think, would be isolated. And then uh, there would be um, the people around that person in the plane would also be questioned. Uh, but it wouldn't be needed to quarantine the whole plane, for example, unless there was some 
something catastrophic happened on the plane and, and the person was vomiting over all the other people. But in that case, the airline would notify CDC quarantine and they would board the plane separately. All right. Thank you so much, Professor, for that. Uh, my pleasure.